Continuing with the Viking Portable World Library, edited by Robert O. Balau, the Jew and the Christian. I know that's supposed to be Moses in the burning bush, but... Uh, For their teachings were based on a deep understanding of the human heart and mind, a king knowledge of the ills and needs of their people, and an exalted vision of righteous justice. Only One can only speculate on how much or how little they were influenced by other similar religious phenomena which were occurring throughout the world. This age of religious awakening took place a little more than half a millennia for the birth of Christ, and gave the Upanishads with their conception of the supreme Brahma, Gautama Buddha, and Mahavira to India, Confucius and Lao Tse to China, and the great monotheistic and work-revering Zarathustra to Persia. In Greece, men sought elevation of the human soul through beauty, and in one of the world's greatest periods of art, Rome was spreading its civilization through co conquest and leaving its mark indelibly upon world society through the Roman genius in lawmaking. In Israel, these seers and moral leaders saw the threatening disintegration of national unity and morality, and remained their people over and over of their covenant with Yahweh, and their debt to him for their deliverance from slavery. They warned them that greed, dishonesty, cruelty, intolerance, lasciviousness, materialism, and sloth were the instruments of national suicide. Perhaps they were strongly influenced by the contemporary Zoroastrianism, for whereas Jehovah had previously been represented as the source of all things, both good and evil, he was now created only with good, while Satan parallel of the Zoroastrian Ingramenu was thought to create evil. Other evidences point to possible extensive borrowing of concepts from the fertile and vital religion of the great Persian. And now, counter-creation uh, counter or the demiurgic sort of thing isn't real creation, it's taking something and turning it evil. So, to say God created everything, yes, God created everything, but, you know, does that make Satan the evil god for doing something different with it? That taking something and, you know. Twisting. But regardless of how much Judaism may have taken from Zoroastrianism or other religions, its own utterances at this time were vastly more important. The Achaemenid period... Uh, definitely influenced Judaism a lot with its rabbis and such. But, again, Zarathustra was clear he was against this degree of professional priesthood ruling the people and all sorts of stuff. It was combining with such force, conviction, and practicality as had never before been achieved, a theology and a social code. It was building an ethical religion in which man must achieve salvation through cooperation with the one God, omnipotent Lord of the universe and loving, merciful Father of us all, in whose Godhead we could participate through righteousness and love in the service of our fellow men. Considering the latter prophets and the earlier leaders as one group, no other religious history has within it such an assembly of giants, Abraham and Moses, Elijah, who is reported to have raised a man from the dead, who miraculously filled the wi widow's pitcher with milk centuries before Christ was said to have performed similar miracles. Elijah, Amos, Hosea, Joel, Micah, and Dower, and, so far and, and the dour and sorrowful Jeremiah, first to suggest others besides Jews may share in the blessings of Jehovah worship. Well, again, no. Perhaps the first mention in the Bible to do that explicitly. Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, isn't it a tra, tra, 
Slothaniah, Ezekiel, Job, of the many trials of the great faith, Isaiah, to whom the loving Father, God, of all man were equal regardless of race, color, or time, or place of birth, and deeply throated Daniel, saved by faith from the jaws of lions, who could dream and sing when he told of the holiness of Jehovah and the glory which slept in the souls of men, waking, waiting only for a reign of human righteousness to awaken it and vivify the human world. Now, their father issues projected upon God has resulted in this idea of God being some sort of sky father. Just like as time went on, Indra became a limited... Uh, sky father sort of character too in the eyes of the hindus but no nation has ever realized the na the visions of greatness as seen by its spiritual leaders well not quite century by century the moral and religious practices of the jews declined until like coins which become so worn that their original values cannot be deciphered they had little in common with the teachings of the great prophets it was time for a new vision and a new leader. 1,200 years after the death of Moses, about the time when Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita was calling India to righteous living and devotion to God, when Buddhism was flooding eastward to China, and Japan and Zoroastrianism was falling away from the greatness which its follow had, follow, uh, that its founder had brought to it, well, the Achaemenid dynasty, and the Magians before that, and, you know, it, it was a long time coming. The religion had fell, but kingdoms had risen. There was born in Bethlehem. Well, actually, there was a few Bethlehems, and Bethlehem is also a name for Virgo, of Judea, a Jew who was descend upon the Hebrew congregation like a storm from heaven, Jew by birth, not by religion crying for repentance and rededication to God. He offered salvation and holy loving kindness to all who would follow him. Jesus of Nazareth was well versed in the religion of his fathers and dedicated, as were those great religious leaders whose concepts he carried on to the worship of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, Jehovah, who is now seen as one God, omnipotent ruler of the universe, and loving father of, man, of, human, of mankind. Again, that wasn't taken literally. Um... As he grew to manhood, Jesus saw a Hebrew nation whose religious life consisted largely of external observances and rituals and sacrifices and petty dietary laws and other domestic rules rather than that in spiritual cooperation with God through humility, social righteousness, and faith of which the latter prophets spoke. Actually, that's more along the Paul side in terms of the antinomial sort of thing. He was actually to restore it to its pre-Judeo elaborations. And saying, you know, these people aren't observing the law. You know, they're observing part of the law and they're making a big deal out of it. I observe part of the law. You know, um, he saw a priestly class who hypocritically held themselves above others, as the priests of Hinduism did at the time of Gautama's birth, and a people who believed that they were chosen of God and thus the superiors of all people. Intolerance, bigotry, hypocrisy, and materialism were like acid poisons eating away the soul of Israel. There were other great Jewish leaders who saw these things. Others were carrying on and advancing the religious thought of the prophets. One of the most notable of these, the incomparable Rabbi Hillel, was still living when Jesus was born. He preached the golden rule of, rep of reciprocity which Confucius had taught in China and Gautama Buddha in India more than half a millennia before, and other principles of humility, worship of the one God, and universal brotherhood, which became such universal parts of Christ's doctrine. But the Hebrew nation as a whole heeded these exhortations as little as they had of Isaiah, as little as the Christian nations of the 20th century heeded the doctrines of Jesus Christ. Yeah, they followed Paul more. They've always followed Paul more. The mission which with Jesus set for himself was essentially no different from that to which Isaiah, Amos, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Hillel, and other great Jewish leaders had devoted their lives. Again, um, none of the prophets were Jews by religion, and this can be established in other detail elsewhere. 
Each of these in Jesus tried to bring understanding and a reawakened consciousness of the need of righteousness to his people, just as Confucius and Lao in China and Gautama Buddha in India and Zarathustra in Persia had done. It was no part of the intention or effort of any one of these to overthrow the religion of his fathers and set up a new religion in its place. Well, none of them, no true prophet of God and no true uh, devotee, looking for the truth, is trying to find a new, found a new religion. But to throw off the innovations that went wrong? Yeah, they most definitely are. And who Christ's most forceful admonitions included his great commandment, the Lord thy God is one God, thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and thy neighbor as thyself. So, therefore, he didn't want people to be Christian. With direct quotations from the Old Testament, the golden rule he quoted was a slight change to make it positive instead of negative from Hillel, he announced his purpose, Luke 4, 18 through 19, in the words of an Old Testament prophet, the Lord anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He hath sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, Isaiah 61, 1 through 2. He said that he had come not to destroy but to fulfill the Jewish laws, no, to the Kushrat, the Jewish laws are the kosher. He didn't. He came to overthrow this. Oh, don't help your neighbors out. Don't step more than two thousand. No, keep the Sabbath holy. You know, but in actuality, that sort of thing. And exceptions to the rule of don't let people die just because it's Saturday. He at all times observed the Jewish religious ceremonies rigorously. Even his cry. Of despair upon the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Actually, Alhe, Alhe, Lama Salechthanu. Sort of like Muhammad. My God, my God, why have you forgiven me? So that quite possibly could be what's really been said. Um, but dying on the cross was to make him a hero god, not a, you know, not a martyr which if he really had died on the cross. Evidence in his preoccupation with Jewish religious texts, for it is a direct quotation from an Old Testament psalm. Racially and religiously, Christ was born, lived, and died a loyal Jew. He sought merely to strengthen observance of the Jewish law and widen his people's understanding of the merciful, loving Father God. Again, these, these people have uh, psychological issues that lead them to think that God is a father. Whose lordship was attested by the Jewish spiritual leaders who preceded him. He wanted to impress upon his people the doctrine that the devotion to God was meaningless unless it was expressed first in, of all in devotion to one's fellow men. The life of Jesus is shrouded in mystery and mysticism. It is the earlier stories of Gautama Buddha and Zarathustra. The scriptural story tells of the miraculous conception of Jesus, the homage paid to him at birth by wise men, probably Zoroastrian priest, who recognized his divinity. Um, not quite. That's not what would have actually happened. Of his temptation by Satan, as Buddha was tempted by Mara and Zarathustra, assaulted by a personification of evil, of many miracles which he performed during his ministry, and as a last proof of his so-called divinity, his resurrection after death. Again, the death, resurrection, ascension thing, that's pretty much what Paul claimed to have known about the story. Everything else, Paul didn't claim to have any knowledge whatsoever of it. Oh, he's, he's, he's the real Savior God who, you know, died, you know, sacrifice, Resurrection, ascension, you know, same basic three things, right? Jesus' reputation during his life was a stormy one. The multitudes drawn by his tremendous personal magnetism and his never-failing understanding and kindness flocked to him and proclaimed his goodness and, and greatness. Many of them acknowledge him as the Son of God and the long-awaited Messiah. The only person who, call, who actually treats Jesus as a God during his life in the Bible is given an exorcism. When this guy's messed up, we need to give him an exorcism. Seriously, that's what's going on in the Bible. And the woman, no, 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 I'm not the good Lord. There's only one good Lord. You know. The long-awaited Messiah. Yeah, one of the Messiahs. Yeah, there would have been people who thought that. But powerful forces 
in the Jewish congregation, jealous of his popularity, incensed by his denunciation of some of them, and bitterly critical of his disregard for formalism, his willingness to violate some of the minor laws of the Jews, and his heretical claim that he was the son of God, repudiated him, conspired to kill him, and saw him crucified, and after his death, perse persecuted his followers. So around the time of Josephus, people start saying, uh, saying, following the Christian thing, yeah, this guy's in hell because he claimed to be God, and, uh, or son of God, and all this. You know, literally, the Jews were just picking, uh, Jesus was an insignificant figure in that society. So there was some changes. Um, it's probably to that persecution that we owe the spread of Jude Judeo-Christianity to the West and its influence upon modern life for reaction from it produced the ministry of Paul. In the beginning of those who followed the doctrines of Jesus, the Jew from Nazareth, were thought of merely as the representatives of a new Jewish sect as the first Buddhist were merely representatives of a new sect in Hinduism. There was nothing startling or revolutionary in the appearance of one more sect. Judaism has survived many divisions and the fusions of many interpretations, but the doctrine of Jesus after his death was singularly unsuccessful among the Jews, and it was only when the convert Paul, the historical founder of Christianity, turned from the persecuting Jews and began his almost fanatic proselytizing I would turn from the persecuting Jews and began his almost fanatic proselytizing among the Gentiles. Again, I, the Gentiles is that goyim is an insult that you should not call people. Just because they're not part of their group doesn't mean they turn their back on God. Huya means to turn your back on God. But the Christians fit the definitions laid down in Tanuk. The doctrine spread into Greece and Rome and thence to the rest of the Western world. Paul initially followed all the stuff, the, the animal sacrifices and all that other stuff, and then decided, ah, let's cut it down to three commandments and maybe 18 commandments, and then, you know. Um, during Paul's ministry in the first century after the death of Jesus, the followers of Christ's doctrine, or more properly, the followers of Christ's doctrine as interpreted by Paul, definitely left the Jewish congregation called themselves Christians and established the Christian church at Antioch. There occurred the greatest and most tragic schism in the religious history of the Western world, and one which Christ himself never intended and never foresaw. None of the, the story of Jesus in the form of which now is extant was recorded in his lifetime. The earliest writings of the New Testament are in the Acts of the Apostles and the Pauline Epistles written in the Common Era, 50 to 65, which actually, yeah, they were probably written then, but they all date after, a little after that. The four Gospels, which tell the story of Christ's life, were written from, now this is presumed, 65 to 150. But the first versions were actually in the 90s for the Gospel of John, um, then Matthew, about 130, And Mark and Luke in the 40s, in the 140s. The three called the Synoptic Gospels because they, I, th I think I got the order right for the last three. Um, the three called the Synoptics because they see together or present substantially the same point of view. Matthew, Mark, and Luke were written last, actually, not first. The, uh, it was a doctrine, but there's no evidence to back it up. The last, the Gospel of John, was written much later and presents somewhat of a different theological concept as much of that relates to the religions of India and China. In the beginning of the word was the Word, John writes, and the Word was was with God, and the Word was God, and this presenting concept, which is very like the Tao and Taoism and the Brahma and Upanishads, indeed, Chinese translations of the Gospel John, of John begin, In the beginning was the Tao, and the Tao was with God, and the Tao was God, repeating the concept of one of the verses of the Tao Te Ching, uh, the King, uh, basic scriptures of Taoism. I'm going to stop there and not finish that page and break this into a third section. Um, but there's something that we need to remember, that the Gospel of John four centuries prior to those 90s when they actually wrote down the first version of it 
we have something interesting. We have a text about Bacchus. That's virtually the same thing. Now, after the canonical Gospels were 19 chapters apiece, they later became more than 20 chapters apiece, and there became more differences. But back when it was 19 chapters, it's, you know, 95% Gospel Bacchus. A lot of it's just, you know, cross out the Jesus, Bacchus. You know, cross out the Bacchus and write in Jesus, and it's the same text. So think about that for a second.